famous hadith that is found in the Sahih, the Messenger وسلم, is addressed, and perhaps this is the fifth or sixth time you've heard this hadith now, where he, Jibreel السلام, appears in the form of a man and asks the Messenger وسلم, a series of questions, the second of which was, iman? What is Iman faith? And he said to him, And to Mina Billahi wa Malai Katihi wa Kutubihi wa Rusulihi wa Liomil Akhir wa Qadr Khairihi wa Sharri. To believe in Allah, to believe in the angels, to believe in the messengers, to believe in the books, to believe in the hereafter, to believe in Qadr. When it comes with good and when it comes with otherwise. We, of course, are going to be concluding this blessed series with number six belief in Qadr, divine decree. Somebody may ask, in the life of a Muslim, there are many things that we are obligated to believe in. Not just these six articles of faith. Tens of other things that we have to believe in. Why then it was mentioned six particular articles of faith which our Iman is dependent upon? Why were these given the title of Arkan? Plural of Rukun, pillars of Iman. Why these six aspects of belief? We believe in the jinn. We believe in the effect of magic. We believe in many other things. Why were these six elements of belief singled out as being the foundations of your belief in Allah? How come? Scholars of Islam have said amidst other answers, because these six elements have a tremendous influence in liberating a human being from all of the false attachments that may stifle your journey to Allah and the home of the hereafter. You can answer this question shortly by saying these six elements of belief are very influential in liberating the mind and the heart and the soul of the Muslim from every false attachment that prevents him from reaching Allah. Belief in Allah, pillar number one. Focus, think about how profound this is in liberating a person from awham, deceptions, illusions, khurafat, myths, attachments to idols, attachment to false gods, attachment to people, attachment from fantasies, false imaginations. Look at how a person's belief in Allah liberates him from all of these elements. Article number two, belief in the angels. Notice how this liberates a Muslim from the need of finding a perfect example as per how Allah Almighty should be worshipped in an angelic standard. You want an example that is fine and high and above that of human standard? We have been liberated and we've been given the angels as an example. Article number three, the belief in the messengers. So if you want a human form, a human example of a human perfection of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be worshipped here on earth, we have been liberated from the need of finding that example. They, are, they have come in the form of prophets and messengers. Article number four, to believe in the books. We have been liberated from the need of finding divine guidance. And Allah has given books an A to Z guide how to attain Allah and His pleasure and His acceptance. Your mind can maybe allow you to reach to the belief in Allah, but what is the reality of the halal and the haram and the names and the attributes? We cannot find that without the Qur'an. So we have been liberated. Allah has given us the belief in the books. And we have been given the belief in the hereafter. What does this liberate us from? liberates us from the pressures of dunya, the anxiety of dunya, and the depression and stress of dunya, and the illusion of dunya, wherever there is a difficulty in life, you have the hereafter. So it liberates you from lonely, worldly attachments. And then you have belief in Al-Qadr, belief in the divine decree, and think about how profound this is in liberating you from the stress that comes with, say, a calamity. A difficulty that comes your way, a financial one, one pertaining to your health, one pertaining to your status, pertaining to your family and children, pertaining to your financial savings. 
how are you going to deal with this calamity so that you don't collapse and you fall into devastation and you are ruined because of the pain that you are feeling. No, Allah has given us qadar, divine decree, so we have been liberated from such a terrible reaction when difficulty comes our way. Do you see why these six elements of belief were singled out and were given the title of pillars of Iman? Question number two that poses itself is, why is Qadr mentioned as number six? This is our conclusion of the series. We have one more lecture remaining. But this is the last of the six pillars of Iman. How come Qadr came as number six? It didn't come as number four or number two, for example. Is this just random or haphazard? No, impossible. It's almost as if, dear brothers and sisters, we are being told that if your belief in Qadr, divine decree, is sound and it's in place, then your belief in the remaining five pillars of Iman will always be, will also be sound, and they will also fall into place. If however your belief and your understanding and your appreciation of Allah's Qadr, divine decree is a little bit misplaced, it's a little bit shaky, it's a little bit rocked with doubts, then your remaining five pillars of faith would also be a little bit shaky and they cannot be sound and complete. Do you see, brothers and sisters, the answer to question number two, why Qadr is mentioned number six? And Allah Almighty knows best. Our discussion today of Qadr, the divine decree, is not going to be in an academic form. Today we want to address the topic of Qadr Divine Decree from a completely different perspective. A perspective which I am hopeful in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we listen to these short and few words today, will give us something tangible, something almost physical that we can take away with us home and it will change the way we observe all of the difficulties that come our way till the day we die. We're going to be discussing the topic of Qadr in the form of gateways. If you wish, we can say hoops. Four of them. And therefore, anything that you experience in your life, trauma, difficulty, stress, anxiety, take it and then pass it through gateway number one, gateway number two, and three and four, and in the end, you will have a calamity that you are able to manage, you are able to deal with you are able to accept and submit to Allah with in the face of it because your understanding of Qadr is sound. What are these four gateways? And I want you to appreciate your brothers and sisters just how important these four gateways are in the life of the 21st century Western Muslim. Because we are living in a time when there is unprecedented depression and sadness and complaints of sleepless nights loss of health, loss of sanity, pills that need to be taken, injections that need to be inserted in a person's body and, and the rest of these difficulties. And then at the colossal level, land that is being destroyed, and nations that are being displaced, and chemical weapons that are being dropped on innocent people. We have to understand, how are we to understand all of these local happenings and international happenings within the umbrella of Qadr? Believe me, dear brothers and sisters, a lot of people will not speak about the doubts that they are experiencing. They have questions that demand an answer, but they don't know who to ask, and sometimes they're too shy to ask them. But all you need is to prod that person. Poke that person, provoke that person. And what happens? He brings out, she brings out all of the doubts that they have been harboring for the last 15, 20 years of their life. Just prod them, poke them out. And then they show you all of the i'tiradat, their objections to the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need these gateways, four of them, with four different titles. If we appreciate them, brothers and sisters, you will never see the Qadr of Allah, His divine decree, the same way again. So let us begin. Please make sure that you take notes. It's sad to see very few notepads and pens. But I'm assuming that you're going to be either depending on the recording or perhaps taking notes through your phone or something to that effect. The first of these gateways is Al-Imanu. بِعَدْلِ اللَّهِ 
to believe in the complete justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is gateway number one. Our understanding of Qadr can never be complete or let us say, we can never f appreciate Qadr in the absence of this gateway. Gateway number one. To believe in the absolute adil justice of Allah Jalla Jalalu. When you hear the name Umar ibn al-Khattab, <coughs> what is one of the very first words that come to mind? What do you think, brothers? Power. Strong power. What else? That is important to be merged with power. Uh, bravery. Uh, bravery. What else? Justice. The justice of Umar radiallahu anhu was so great that it affected the animals in other countries. And he would say that if an animal, a camel, was to trip somewhere in Iraq, although I am found in Medina, I would fear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would hold me accountable for it on Yawm al-Qiyamah. Justice. When you hear the name Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, a relative of Umar a little bit down the line in his progeny, What's one of the very first words that come to mind? Courage. Courage. What else? Justice. 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 He was so just that his reign, his khilafah, reminded people of the times of prophethood. <coughs> and they began to see when he died, animals fighting again. And so the farmers in the outskirts, they said, our animals haven't been fighting for the last two years. It must be an indication that Umar ibn Abdul Aziz has died. Justice. If this is the justice that is found in some human beings, individuals, mortals, creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what then about the justice of a Lord, a creator, a Rabb, who has called himself, as some scholars have mentioned, Al Adil, the just. The just. What type of justice can you expect from a Lord who has given himself such a name? And therefore, brothers and sisters, this is gateway number one. The gateway of justice. Whenever you ask, how come? Why me? Like, is that even fair? Is that just? Take that calamity, this fitna, and pass it through this first gateway. The gateway that is signposted with the ayah that reads, Inna Allah la yadlimu nasa shay'a. Allah does not do injustice to people at all. Pass it through the gateway that is signposted with وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِظَلَّامٍ لِلْعَبِيدِ Your Lord does not do injustice to his slaves. Whenever you feel doubt, pass it through the gateway that is signposted with إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَظْلِمُ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةِ Allah does not wrong do even the weight of an atom. So you will look around and you will see people who have money, but maybe they haven't been blessed with health. There may be some people whom Allah has given wealth and He's given money, uh, He's given health and He's given money, but He hasn't given, say, children. There may be somebody who Allah has given money, He's given him good looks, He's given him children, but He hasn't given him or her peace of mind and ability to sleep at night. Who was the one who distributed all of this between the people? Allah answers, نَحْنُ قَسَمْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ مَعِيشَتَهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا We were the ones who distributed their livelihoods between them in the life of this world. Who was the one who gave a person status and he lowered another individual? Allah answers, وَرَفَعْنَا بَعْضَهُمْ فَوْقَ بَعْضٍ دَرَجَاتٍ We were the ones who raised some of them over others in many degrees. Allah is just. Allah is al-adil. This is gateway number one the perfect justice of Allah. Beware of ever doubting that. Because if this gateway is not present, or it is covered with curtains, we will never be able to accept the qadr of Allah. He is just in everything that He does, even though you and I may not see it that way. This gateway, brothers and sisters, is so effective in giving you peace of mind and appreciating some of the qadr of Allah that the justice of Allah Almighty is mentioned in the very dua that we have been taught to say during times of sorrow and grief. When you are sad, depressed, 
There is a dua we've been taught to say by the Messenger وسلم, And that dua includes the justice of Allah Yet yeah, because it helps you appreciate the qadr of Allah What is the dua? Ahsant Ahmad narrates in his musnad on the authority of the companion Abdullah ibn Mas'ud That the Messenger وسلم, said Any human being who is affected with sorrow Grief, sadness, he should say the following words Allahumma inni abduk. O oh Allah, I am your slave. Ibn Abdik, son of your slave. Ibn Amatik, son of your maidservant. Nasiyati biyadik, my forelock, my forelock is in your hands. Ma'adin fiya hukmuk, your command over me will always be executed. Listen to the next part. Adlun fiya qadauk. Your command over me is always just. Your command over me is always just. Look, the justice of Allah, this gateway number one, is found in the dua for sorrow and depression. Then you go on to say, I ask you by every name that you possess, نفسك, that you have named yourself with, O oh Allah. أو علمته أحدا من خلقك or you have taught it to one of your creation or you have revealed this name in your book or a name that you have kept for yourself in the knowledge of the unseen I ask you by those names that you make the Quran the life of my heart and the light of my chest and the removal for my sorrow and the departure of my grief the companions they said oh messenger of Allah we should should we memorize this he said everybody who hears this dua should memorize it and teach it to others and therefore whether it's money that you've lost health that you've lost a loved one that you've lost a country that you've lost muqaddasat holy places of worship like al-aqsa that we've temporarily lost pass it through gateway number one that says what Allah does not do wrongdoing to anybody. Allah is al-adil. Is this enough? La. We're getting there. But we need another gateway. Gateway number two. What is the title of this gateway? Al-Imanu bi'ilmillahi Al-Muhit bi kulli shay The belief in the absolute knowledge of Allah that has encompassed all things. This is gateway number two. And therefore, before you ask, does Allah not know? Does Allah not see my difficult situation? Can't Allah hear the screams of those women? Is Allah, billah, God forbid, not aware of what is happening on the other side of the globe? Before we entertain any of these questions, Pass that difficult circumstance through gateway number two. That is titled with the ayah where Allah Almighty says, Inna Allah la yaghfa alayhi shay'un fil ardi wa la fil sama. There is nothing in the heavens and the earth that is hidden to Allah. Before you doubt the knowledge of Allah, pass it through the gateway that is signposted with the ayah. وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لَكَ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ أَحَاطَ بِالنَّاسِ When we said to you, O Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that your Lord has encompassed people completely. Before you doubt, we ask, can he not see me? Can, can he not hear me? Pass it through the gateway that is signposted with the ayah. سَوَاءٌ مِّنْكُمْ مَنْ أَسَرَّ الْقَوْلَ وَمَنْ جَهَرَ بِهِ it is the same to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether you speak out loudly or whether you whisper quietly, it is the same. وَمَنْ هُوَ مُسْتَخْفٍ بِاللَّيْلِ وَسَارِبٌ بِالنَّهَارِ And it is the same to Allah. Whether you hide in the midst of the night or you go out walking by day, it is the same to Allah. He can see you and hear you both ways. Ya Allah. He is alim. He knows. And consider the ayah, brothers and sisters, and this ayah is remarkable. 
Allah says, وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ And with him are the keys to the unseen. لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُوْ Nobody has knowledge of these keys except him. وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ And he knows everything that is on land and everything that is within the depths of the sea. وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا And there is no leaf that falls off any tree except that he has full knowledge of it. وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ And there is no grain found within the darknesses of the earth. وَلَا رَطْبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ And nothing that is dry and nothing that is moist إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ Except that it is with Allah written in a clear record. Any leaf that may fall off any tree, on any place, Allah Jalla Jalaluhu has full knowledge of it. Imagine, if you or I were given the task of taking note of the number of leaves that fall off that tree that is outside of the masjid. Just the one tree. Perhaps we may be able to do that during the day, but surely by night we need to rest. Perhaps we may be able to do it during a calm, still day, but on a windy day and the leaves are flying all over the place, it becomes a lot more difficult to take note of every tree and what time the leaves of it are falling. Imagine therefore you and I were given the task of taking note of every leaf that is falling off the trees of, say, just London. Imagine if we were given the task of taking note of every leaf that falls off every tree within just one of the rainforests found here on planet Earth. Say, for example, the Amazon rainforest. That is home to 12,000 different species of trees, which is home to 400 billion trees. One rainforest. Imagine if we were given the task of documenting every leaf that falls off not just those trees, but of every tree in the world, which is estimated at around 3 trillion trees. There is no leaf that falls off any tree except that Allah has full knowledge of it. And therefore, before we ask, does Allah not see me? Can He not hear me? Is He unaware? Remember, there is no planet that obscures another planet in the vision of Allah. There is no sky, no heaven that obscures another heaven from the vision of Allah. There is no dua that obscures the sound of another dua in the hearing of Allah. Allah knows. Allah's knowledge is, as the scholars of Islam, they say, إن الله يعلم ما إن الله يعلم ما كان وَمَا هُوَ كَائِنْ وَمَا سَيَكُونْ وَمَا لَمْ يَكُنْ لَوْ كَانَ كَيْفَ يَكُونُ Mind-blowing. The scholars, they say, Allah has knowledge of everything that has happened in the infinite past. And He has knowledge of everything that is happening today. And He has knowledge of everything to the future infinitely. Listen to number four. And He has knowledge, they say of everything that will not happen. If it was to happen, how it would happen? Ya Allah, subhanAllah. We haven't worshipped him like he deserves to be worshipped. Perhaps we may be able to grasp the first three, knowledge of the past, and present, and infinite future, perhaps. But number four, he has knowledge of the things that will not happen, if they were to happen, how they would happen, meaning what? Meaning the infinite probabilities. The never-ending ways that things could have happened, that will never happen. Allah knows how they would have unfolded. Ya Allah! So you came here today at Holloway Mosque at a particular minute, at a particular second. If you were one minute late, Allah knows what would have happened. If you didn't come to the masjid today, Allah knows what would have happened. If you had woken up from the right hand side of your bed, Allah knows what would have happened and the left side also applies. You went to the bathroom at a specific time, had you not, not, had you not gone at that time, Allah knows what would have happened. So the infinite probabilities of things that will never happen, Allah knows how they would have unfolded as well. What is the dalil, the evidence of this from the Quran? Allah says, Surah Al-An'am chapter 6, وَلَوْ تَرَى Speaking about the regret, the wrongdoers when they see the hellfire on the day of judgment and they will wish for a second chance. What does Allah say? 
ولو ترى إذ وقفوا على النار فقالوا يا ليتنا نرد ولا نكذب بآيات ربنا ونكون من المؤمنين بل بدا لهم ما كانوا يخفون من قبل ولو ردوا لعادوا لما نهوا عنه وإنهم لكاذبون الله says that when they see the punishment on the day of reckoning they will say oh we wish that we can come back to the life of this world so that we may do differently to the wrong that we used to do Allah says I have knowledge if you were to be sent back to the world you would have done the exact same thing look they weren't sent back to the world but Allah is saying if it was to happen I know what would have happened what about that child which Al Khadr killed during the presence of Musa, he took a boulder and crushed his head, as some of the narrations they say. And Musa could not believe what he did. But then Al Khadr, he gave Prophet Musa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a lesson in Qadr. And he said to him, وَأَمَّا الْغُلَامُ فَكَانَ أَبَوَاهُ مُؤْمِنَيْنِ فَخَشِيْنَا أَنْ يُرْهِقَهُمَا تُغْيَانًا وَكُفْرًا فَأَرَدْنَا أَنْ يُبْدِلَهُمَا رَبُّهُمَا خَيْرًا مِنْهُ زَكَاةً وَأَقْرَبَ رُحْمًا he is saying to Prophet Musa that Allah Almighty knows that if he had grown up to attain maturity, he would have caused difficulty to his parents through his disbelief and his sin. Did he grow up? Did he disbelieve? Did he get a chance? But Allah has knowledge, category number four. Allah has knowledge of the things that will not happen. If they were to happen, how they would? How they would happen. So this is gateway number what? Number two. What was gateway number one, brothers? Remind me, what was it titled? Absolute justice of Allah. Jalla Jalla. Number two? Absolute knowledge of Allah. Tayyib, we're halfway there. Gateway number three. Al-Imanu bi hikmatillahi al-baligah. To believe, to have certainty in the absolute wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ah, therefore when a calamity comes your way, like a relative of mine who left his home to buy something for the family and his two-year-old boy, not too long ago, ran out of the house to go with his father whom he loves and his father reversed the car not knowing he was there and he crushed him alive. And his younger daughter was banging on the car and he didn't know what was happening. And he came out and he looked and he saw his son breathing his last. How do you deal with a calamity like that if you don't have these four gateways? Gateway number one, Allah Almighty is just, even if you see it differently. Gateway number two, Allah Almighty is aware. Allah is aware. Gateway number three, to believe in the absolute just in the absolute wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said, Walaw sha arabuk, la jama'ahum ala al huda, fala takunan min al jahileen. O Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah said to him, If I wished, I would have gathered all of the people upon Iman. So don't be from the ignorant.